Welcome to From Oracy to Writing in the Digital Age. The progress from oracy to writing is a journey for both the teacher and the student. Some of the journey is done solo, while other elements are travelled together. Teachers may consider these parts as helping students build a bridge to get from oracy to writing so that each may continue with their journey. Just as building a literal bridge takes planning, so does this bridge. Environment, foundations and approaches all must be considered. In addition, teaching and learning writing in the digital age means there are more elements to learn about, yet these elements also create more inviting learning opportunities for both students and teachers. The first step in the journey is knowing why it is so important to help students make a connection between oracy and writing. Strong skills in one method of communication usually lead to strength in other communicative areas. According to Halliday, writing and speech need to be seen as reinforcing each other in a total process of language development. Examples of this are scanning a text when reading relating to writing headings for a first draft and analysing authors' methods such as construction of phrases and use of punctuation to provide models for students' own writing. At this point in the journey, the teacher must be clear on the two aspects of language. To gain an idea of the relationship between oracy and writing, the similarities and differences between the two first need to be examined. Elements common to both oral and written language are, both use words, are intended to convey meaning, are skills that only human beings possess, and use similar areas of the brain. Similar conditions are required for students to learn both, and the register or form of language used is dependent on context and audience, however are at different ends of the mode continuum. So, what are the differences between oracy and writing? Spoken language is immediate, with no sentence or word boundaries. It relies upon shared context and stress, intonation, gestures and body language. Oral language has fewer content words, with more conjunctions, pronouns and prepositions. Written language, on the other hand, is composed to communicate ideas over time and distance. It has more structure than oral language and is organised into words, sentences and paragraphs. Writing uses more content words and is, through necessity, more explicit of our context as the reader is likely to be removed from the writer's situation. The teacher has now reached a stage in the journey where they need to create a learning environment. To do this, Camborne's conditions of learning speech are useful to re-examine in light of learning to write. During immersion, children are surrounded by written texts such as lists, calendars, in demonstration, adults model writing, showing examples of other people's writing when they read books and other texts, and also sharing their own works in progress and the challenges they are facing with them. Teachers believe every child can learn to write and expect them to do so. At the same time, the teacher is giving each student some responsibility and choice in what they learn. As with speech, perfection will not be achieved immediately and children's initial approximations must be accepted to help boost their confidence. Writing skills are consolidated with daily practice. Supportive feedback to strengthen weak areas and celebration of achievements are vital to creating an environment conducive to learning. Deciding how to approach the teaching of writing is the next stage in the teacher's journey. Two approaches are suitable to teach writing and particularly effective when used in unison. The process approach focuses on the series of steps involved in composing a piece of written text, while the genre or text form approach has more emphasis on the structure of the text to be written. When using the text form approach, considering the relationship between Halliday's oral functions and the various text forms can assist in clarifying the journey from oracy to writing. Forms will be different, but the purposes will be the same, often with an overlap as each of Halliday's purposes of speaking may fall into several different categories of writing purpose. The teacher has now arrived at the place where the foundations for the student's bridge will be built and their journey together begins. The key or foundation for building the bridge from oracy to written language is talking. Reading aloud, both teacher and students, teacher talk, self-talk 
and primarily student discussion with the teacher and with their peers are all vital to help students create the foundation for the bridge from oracy to writing. Oral rehearsal is a very important strategy to promote at this stage and teachers need to encourage children to say out loud what they intend to write down. This helps clarify exactly what is going to be written, giving the student more confidence in their writing. Additionally, this discussion enhances the socio-cultural aspect of language, that the creation and development of both speech and writing are impacted by past and current social and cultural influences and environment. Teachers need to build a bridge with each student according to individual needs. This part of the journey may well be the most challenging. Knowledge of students is vital, including knowledge of work previously covered and strengths and weaknesses in various text forms. Using this knowledge, teachers may use the gradual release of responsibility model. Use of this model in a variety of whole class, small group, pair and individual situations allows the teacher to have each student working in the stage most individually appropriate to foster enhanced learning. Working through the stages of familiarisation, analysis, modelling, sharing, guiding and applying according to each student's individual needs is the most effective way to help students learn to write. So how does this journey tie into writing in the digital age? Ultimately, the story of the journey and building the bridge from oracy to writing remain the same. However, the writing act and the end product that are hallmarks of the distance covered can now vary widely. Traditional handwritten tasks can be supplemented with podcasts, blogs, web quests, digital stories, web pages, and a vast array of multimodal texts incorporating any combination of text, pictures, diagrams, audio, and video. The ability to use the many different digital forms available requires teachers to possess multiliteracies and can be a considerable challenge. However, the ever-growing presence of technology presents an excellent opportunity for teachers and students to work together as learners and signifies that the journey from oracy to writing is only the beginning of a lifelong voyage for both of them. The journey and the bridge from oracy to writing are vitally important for both student and teacher. Teachers facilitate the journey by creating the right environment, understanding the links and differences between oracy and writing, knowing their students' needs and teaching accordingly, and creating extensive opportunities for discussion. In the digital age, teachers need to extend their own journey by embracing digital forms of writing without losing sight of traditional methods. These multiliteracies will give both student and teacher the skills to continue on their journeys, gaining the lifelong learning that the digital age requires. There's a track winding back to an old-fashioned shack along the road to Gundagai.